Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me about your final exam tomorrow. Do you know how many questions and who submitted questions? Because I don't know anything about this. <laughs> kind of nice to know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you a while ago. Yeah, no, I was wondering what your final exam looks like tomorrow. How many questions and who all submitted questions? Do you know? I personally don't know. I'm, I'm not sure um, if okay. anyone knows in the class. <laughs> Hopefully you know what to study. <laughs> well, we just have to go with what we, we received, lectures. And, uh, oh, okay. I got you. All right. Good morning, Dr. Dunning. Good morning. How are you, Ashley? Or whoever that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. It's me. <laughs> okay. That's one of the disadvantages of Zoom. You know, it's hard to recognize voices with faces, but thank you all for being here on time. Well, most people are here. We'll wait a couple minutes here. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Anissa. Good morning. Ashley? Um, yes, Dr. Dunning? Yes, do you? Do you have a syllabus for the overall course in which I'm teaching? Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember seeing a course outline on the portal. Was there a course outline on the portal there? I'm asking because I'm just, you know, this is the fourth year I've taught and I'm not still not sure how my course fits into the bigger course and whether my questions are or my portion of the grade is half of the course grade or three quarters of it and just kind of be nice to know that but not essential <laughs> would be nice for us to know too. <laughs> oh, yes, it would. I mean, you know, it makes a difference how much effort you put into each piece of that pie. And if you don't know what piece it is, then it's kind of hard to figure that out. Oh, well, okay. 
I did get an email from Dr. Jones saying that one of the people who was teaching isn't going to finish their portion, so I'm not sure who that was. Maybe it was Mr. Morgan or something like that. Mr. Morgan finished yesterday. Oh, he did? No Maybe was there Mr. Clark. Clark who wasn't going to finish? I think so. It's Mr. Yeah, Clark. okay. Yeah, there, there was a bit of overlap yesterday because uh, there was a lecture of embezzlement, which we all oh. so Oops, that I didn't probably see that. could be utilized better instead of redoing. Yeah, well, see, and I don't. Know, I apologize for that. I don't have access to that those other schedules, so I don't know who's teaching what. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, sure well, you know. should be all embezzled out then. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Dunning, so I do see a course outline, but it doesn't specify. Um, What's what? Yeah, it doesn't really specify how much your part versus Dr. Right. Morgan's versus. Well, yeah. Thanks for looking. And does that course outline then list the other topics that other people are covering? Uh, <laughs> no. No. Okay. So yeah, I, I, if I knew, know ahead of time, then I can adjust what's taught, you know, based on what else you're getting. But sounds like we're kind of not knowing that information. <laughs> so, all right. I think we're still waiting for Gervais. I hate to go forward because, you know, he's doing his, managing that practice by himself, and I have I really don't want to go over what we're doing today without him on board. Maybe somebody could text him if he could join soon, that would be helpful. So you guys can get on with this and then maybe study if you get done early today. Yeah, Professor Dunning. Yeah. The only thing I see in the course outline, it says for examination, theory written, which would be 70% of the grade. And it, it says 120 to 180 minutes, one exam, but it says part one and two, and then says part one, 46%, and part two, 24%. So this is one exam, but I guess two different components in the exam. One would be 46% okay. and the other one, 24 All right. So since you're doing the most of it, I'm assuming. So most of, most of your grade is, most of your grades on those exams then. Yeah. Okay. So combine those two ex exams are 70 some percent? 70, yes. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> That's what we call a high stakes exam here. All right. So I think Gervais just joined us. So thank you all for being here. And so I'm sharing a screen of what happened in Lincoln, Nebraska last night. So are you seeing this photo? Uh oh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. So can you see this picture? Yes. Okay, so that's my son's house and what's kind of left of the roof. So like at one or two o'clock in the morning, we have these huge thunderstorms come through. He's got a major, major uh, tree out front. I think it's an ash tree, that doesn't matter. But as you can see, part of that tree is now on top of his roof. So he had to take the day off and deal with that call his insurance agent we'll see how much damage there is to that kind of a scary time uh, i followed up yesterday with mrs martin harris from the dental school and i think now somebody has the prizes we sent <laughs> So I'm not sure if all the prizes have been verified that are in that are in the box. So I sent you an email yesterday. Uh, I know you've got an exam tomorrow. I mean, you can do this live, but you can just kind of scroll through here and see. So sorry to Gervais and Bogdan, but most of these are, are women's <laughs> gifts because most of the people in the class are women. Um, of course, you could always get this for uh, a person you care about, right? So... So we've got these little necklaces as prizes and a couple of women's t-shirts. Had to get you a Nebraska t-shirt in there. 
These are little uh, earrings. My wife thinks these are really cute. I don't know. I don't wear earrings, but she likes them. So maybe you'd want to choose from those. These are actually made in Lincoln, so that's why we bought them here. A couple of little uh, bracelets. I think all is well is something you say a lot there. And I think blessed, blessed is a lot of common phrase you use or common word that you use there. And I have a couple of dental college t-shirts if you just can't get enough of dental colleges. <laughs> there's, there's our t-shirt um, from our dental college. And you see this unusual logo, kind of looks like a medieval fort shield. <laughs> so that's our logo. Somebody got paid a lot to, to do that, I think, and develop that. And then uh, there's another shirt here. So, so I'm almost done computing your overall financial performance in the simulation. And everybody did well. Everybody's going to get an A minus or an A or an A plus. I'll have to see how those scores settle out. But everybody's going to get a, a good grade for that portion of it. It doesn't sound like that's going to make up a lot of your overall course grade. So maybe at least 10, 15 percent maybe total of your course grade, something like that. Okay, let's go over where we're headed today. This is posted under RVLE, under topic three. All these things I'm gonna show you are under topic three. So here's what you do, and we'll go through some step-by-step -step instructions. But this column, are y'all seeing this? I just wanna make sure. This is 2020, don't worry about the date. <laughs> so um, this column, should be just transferring your original plans that you emailed me, right? You did that, uh, what now, gosh, two weeks ago. So if you forecasted 1800 patients, you put 18 here, you put 120 here, whatever your original goals were from the plan that you originally developed. Same thing for all these things. You just transfer your numbers that you originally had. There's a slight change here. I'm going to also, this is not on the original plan, this section, but it's easy enough to figure out and hear the instructions for that. This is a simple line item on the upper left of all of your quarter out, quarter 12 printout. Every quarter it says how much your adjustments were, so that's an easy transfer of numbers, and you can divide that number into your gross production and then, and then put that information over here. So here's where you enter your quarter 12 outcomes. Here's your original forecast, what you thought you'd do. Here's what you actually achieved in quarter 12. And so that those are just the numbers part of it. And then there are a series of questions to ask, answer. You may remember that I had indicated to you that you're not graded on whether you achieved your goals, but how well you can explain how you did or didn't meet them. So this, this first section asks you to answer questions other than profit and overhead. So make sure you read these questions carefully because there is a separate question on profit and overhead. So this section does not cover profit and overhead, but other things like loan balance, like number of new patients, all those other variables. So you identify one area where you did a lot better than you thought you did, than you thought you would, and then describe in a good paragraph, three, four, five sentences, how you achieved that, what strategies you implemented to, to achieve that. And if there was a goal you didn't reach, then identify what that was and, I, and explain again in three or four sentences why you weren't able to achieve that goal. Here, you're going to calculate your overhead. And for the purposes of overhead, we're going to divide total costs into your collections for quarter 12. A couple of practices made a big move, and they, they moved from a quarter uh, 11 credit policy of four to a three. That brought in huge amounts of cash for them, really elevated their profit, and probably pushed their overhead down probably 5%, 10%. So if you did that, you're going to probably have a pretty good overhead.
Section two then asks you to explain in two or three sentences three variables related to overhead and why your overhead was the way it was. So I gave examples here. Adjustments in PPO, changing your credit policy from a four to a three could have significantly lowered your uh, overhead and increased your profit in quarter 12. Keeping your utilization rate at a high level could have achieved that, your participation in managed care. So lots of potential answers. There are probably five or six potential answers. I'm just gonna ask you to cover three of those. So identify what the variable was and then explain how that contributed to your overhead. And then you'll send me, uh, hopefully today, your financial ratio analysis for quarters 9, 10, 11, and 12. So you just email me your Excel file when it's done. That Excel file will include graphs. I mean, so you don't have to, don't have to print anything. Everything is just built into that. And then look at your quarter 12 results. So these should be quarter 12. So look at your quarter 12 results and just pick out these variables. What was your hygiene production? The ex expected value is supposed to be around 33.3. .3, so just put whatever your result was for hygiene production as a percentage of your overall production. The, the Excel file will tell you that. It'll spit out a percentage. It's gonna say 32.4 or 35.8, whatever it is. So you just put the percentage that you achieved here. Here is your accounts receivable portion of one, one month. It's actually one quarter, but it doesn't make any difference. So you're gonna put that ratio here. It's probably going to be between one three and one six, maybe something like that. How much you collected in quarter 12 as a percentage of your billable amount. Those practices that lowered their credit, their credit policy from a four to a three, realize this number could be more than a hundred. So I think, I think Lee and Bogdan, I think weren't you one of the practices that went from a four to a three in quarter 12 for a credit policy? I think you were. Somebody was, two or three of you were. So just realize it says expected value is 97 to 99. However, if you tightened your credit policy, you may have brought in more money because you tightened up that credit policy than you actually uh, produced. So this could be over 100, and if it is, then it is. Patient generation measures indicate your recall effectiveness, new patients per day. That's going to be a number like 1.1, 1.3, 1 1.8, something like that. Staff efficiency, hygiene efficiency here. So, so just indicate what that percentage is. And your individual demand index. This is on your quarter 12 printout. Want that to be one or more. We've been looking at that number every quarter, so you enter that here. So when you're completed with this and you're done with your Excel file, you just email me those two, that Word document here and then your Excel sheet. I would encourage you, I've been, I've been grading these a long time, just don't BS. <laughs> don't make stuff up when you complete this because I'll know you made it up. Uh, sometimes I'll have students say like, um, oh gosh, we, we, uh, we, we achieved higher, um, we set higher fees than we had planned because we kept looking at the market numbers and kept buying that research. And then I go to the summary report and it tells me every quarter whether you bought research or not. <laughs> so I know that that, you know, like I had, a, I had a practice this last semester said, yeah, we checked that fee and bought that fee information several times throughout the simulation. Well, out of 12 quarters, they did it once. Once isn't several. So just whatever you did, just tell me what you did. You don't have to make things up. All right. Let's see what else we got here.
Okay, we'll go through the specific steps to go to complete the project for today. You don't have to do these in, in this particular order, although it probably would be better to do it in this order. So you're going to input every data point from quarters 9, 10, 11, and 12 into the respective columns on the Excel file. That Excel file is on RVLE, it's just called ratio, ratios or financial analysis, that Excel file. So it's posted there for you. You can also get it on the website. You're gonna review your, the sample strategic plan assessment. So there's an example of what this can look like and I'll show you that before you start. Realizing your answers aren't gonna be the same because they're gonna be different results, but it gives you an idea of what I'm looking for. You'll then complete the strategic plan assessment pages that we went over. Be as specific and detailed and accurate as possible. Realize this is an open book and open source assessment. And so you should review and incorporate and reference in your answers posted documents uh, on RVLE, such as Dr. Costas's PowerPoint, like his ratio of 30% for staff and 30% for all of the costs. You could reference that. You could reference there's some key numbers to achieve for general practices that's posted there for you. You can review content and incorporate content from, content from the simulation manual, such as the chapters on understanding the printout and the financial analysis. And there's also an important notes on decision document. And you've got chapters three and 12 from the transition textbook. So I don't expect you to be you know, having 10 references and you don't have to put in notes because I know what these references are, but you can just say according to chapter three, this should happen according to Dr. Costas, this should be the way it should be. And then this is what our result was. So you can reference those during, in your document. Follow the instructions carefully. Please do a spell grammar check before you submit the strategic plan assessment. You can email that to me, hopefully by three today to get done earlier. When you're done with the Excel sheet, and the financial analysis and with the strategic plan assessment, you're done for the day. If you've already worked on that financial analysis or the ratio analysis, you could be done maybe as early as 10 or 11, I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll finish at different levels here, different rates. So email me the strategic plan assessment, email me the financial analysis Excel file completed, for quarters 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then lastly, prepare a short oral report that you'll give to the rest of the class tomorrow. This is not real detailed. This shouldn't take you too long, but what was your beginning overall strategy in the simulation? What changes did you make along the way? What strategic moves that you think were important did you make? What was your final overhead percentage that'll come right off of your financial analysis or right after off of your strategic plan assessment? And if you were to advise another group of students, what Three or four recommendations would you give them to succeed in the simulation? And if you were to redo the simulation, what two, one or two things would you have done differently? So one of the unique features of your class was that no one specialized in these general practice types. Everybody was a type one. I talked with a couple practices. They almost made that big move, but no one did. Maybe if you replayed, you'd want to try that out and see what would happen. And I'll show you this sample. Okay, here's a sample assessment. This is also under topic three on RVLE. All of your numbers and your answers will be different because you're gonna approach things in a different way. But you can see we've just transferred numbers from an original plan here, then listed the actual outcomes here. So 
So notice you're not having to do any explaining in on this first page. This is just numbers. It could be over two pages, depending on how you format it. And then here's an exa a few examples of the answers to the questions. So you can read through that example to see kind of what's expected of you. So again, that's on RVLE if you want to pull that up and look at it. So that's all that I have to go over with you, I'm just going to turn you loose in your groups to complete this work. So just go about it methodically. We've got plenty of time. Again, we've got class scheduled till 12. If we need to do the afternoon, we've got class from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. We may not need that. If you need it for one group and not another, that's fine. So as soon as you complete those documents, your financial analysis for quarters 9 through 12, and complete the strategic, uh, the strategic plan assessment and fill all that out, you're done for the day, so just email it to me. And otherwise, let's see, Ashley, we want to start at eight tomorrow, correct? Instead of nine? All right, that probably will help you with your studying. So that's fine. We'll move to eight tomorrow morning. And, you know, probably we'll be done if we start on time. It's probably not gonna take us more than two hours. That would be my guess. Might be less than that. So tomorrow, I'll announce, uh, I'll have some introductory comments, not very long, maybe 15 minutes worth of comments. Then I will announce which teams finished first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and have everybody select their prizes. I have a sample to go over a case study of, of a practice in the simulation a couple of years ago that made a big mistake in quarter 12 by accident. They made typographical entries. They were on full Medicaid, full PPO, and full capitation in quarter 11. And the person who did the entries put none, none, and none in quarter 12. And so <laughs> he didn't mean to do that. But you can imagine what happened to their practice numbers. Uh, so we'll, I'm going to show you that because yesterday we talked about how much impact raising your fees has on managed on your profit and we talked about how much managed care impedes on your profit in your practice how it eats into your profit and so i think you're kind of going to be shocked what happened between a quarter 11 and a quarter 12 when a practice made a mistake and got rid of all their managed care the numbers are kind of shocking they're shocking to me i think they'll be shocking to you so we'll share that then we'll have each of the groups uh give their short reports that i've already outlined that are in the steps to complete the strategic plan and uh, so that's our agenda for tomorrow. I'll be around. If I get up and I'm not here uh, out at my desk, I'll be close by. If I get up to take a break, I'll be right back. So anytime anybody wants to ask, ask a question about what you're doing to clarify something, you're free to ask those questions. You can ask them to the group as a whole. Or if you prefer, you can just send a question through chat. Either way is fine. I'll be watching both. Any questions from anybody? All good? Okay. So I'll be hanging around here and I'll watch my email inbox so I know I'll know when you're done. You know, I will have received those documents. And again, when you're done, you're done. You might if you've already done your financial analysis, for example, if you've kept up for each quarter, you could be done with this maybe at 10 or 10.30. If you haven't started that, you may not be done till two or three. So it kind of depends on what work you've already done. So otherwise, have at it, good luck, and I'll work on your final course rankings here or the simulation rankings.